Today, we're going to talk about quality management, and our topic is quality gains without the pain. How do we increase our quality level, make it higher, while we are decreasing quality cost? In general, the, the more quality level, right? The, the better quality we want, we, the more we have to spend in quality. That is actually called our preventive cost. So our, on prevention of quality problems, the more we spend, the better quality level we get. And then what are the kind of costs we have? Well, we have failure cost. That means uh, that the less we spend on prevention is probably means we're spending more on rejection and the implications of rejection. Okay? So this is our failure cost. Failure cost. So failure cost is going down as quality level goes up prevention cost is going up. What is that doing then? If we add up these two costs, we end up with a quality cost curve that kind of looks like that. Kind of looks like that. And our minimum quality cost is here, at this intersection. So here we have our, our minimum quality cost minimum cost to, uh, but that is not necessarily our optimal quality level, right? That could be uh, that at that minimum cost, we have uh, four sigma, let's suppose. Now this is not set for anybody. As we keep going and trying to do more defect reduction, we can end up uh, up here. We, we'll start increasing and getting more prevention costs, but we'll have fewer uh, discrepancies. And actually, if we're looking for zero, really what a lot of people are doing is spending a lot on prevention, okay? To get to our five sigma, five sigma, our six sigma, six sigma levels, that is usually increasing our prevention costs. Usually, not just prevention costs, but also the other way to get um, a higher levels of quality is through rework, and all that cost is adding up here. Let's talk about what, what in detail are failure costs and prevention costs. Let's start by doing that. So, let's start with prevention. appraisal and then let's talk about internal and external failure the best thing would be not to have external failures at all because that means that our customer is the one detecting the failure. And we have things like um, customer complaints, warranty issues, and the worst of all is loss of sales. because our brand reputation has eroded. The next thing that we could do is catch problems inside, right? And if we catch, catch them inside, we still have the, uh, the discrepancy documentation that we have to do. Okay, 
extension, we might have to scrap, we might have to rework, all that labor of rework. We might have to do some uh, corrective action. So to avoid getting uh, to avoid getting to internal failure, we're going to do appraisal. Appraisal of quality as we go along in process. Our appraisal activities are going to include inspection. Um, other kinds of verification along the way. It's going to include a process audit and quality metrics. So these are activities that we're going to do to avoid getting internal failures and to definitely avoid getting external failures. We're going to appraise quality along the way. And really, we're going to even spend more on prevention to even uh, to reduce appraisal and reduce further failure. What can we do in prevention? Well, we can create work instructions to standardize the way that we uh, perform our work so we can repeat our processes and we can capture best, pro best practices there. And we can improve our training personnel. We can certify them. I mean certify, yeah, not certifiable. Then we can also uh, make sure that our equipment is calibrated and maintain so equipment service and calibration so those are all preventive activities actually let's put that even separately we need tool calibration the more that we do up front in prevention the more that we do in appraisal the less we're going to have of failures and we do not like failures. So we want to do more prevention, more appraisal, and reduce failures. That's what these equations over here are about. Right? The more that we spend on prevention, the less cost we have on failure. But this uh, doc document that we're going to download today is talking about how we can reduce these curves. The idea is that you have been doing your Six Sigma projects and you've been improving quality along the way, trying to get to Four Sigma, Five Sigma, Six Sigma, but at some point you're now spending more to get better quality. But that's not the only way to attack this problem. The other way to attack this problem is to say, what if we can make it more efficient to do prevention? What if we can reduce the cost of creating instructions, of training people, of servicing equipment? What if we can be smarter about inspection so we don't do 100% inspection? We can reduce it and have more oversight. What if instead of having quality be overhead, we move quality to the responsibility of the production, production personnel. What if we automate quality metrics? So instead of people, uh, somebody dedicated to creating spreadsheets all day, it's automatically done from uh, the side effect of, of an online system. What if we reduce, if we finally do get uh, failure, but we reduce the cost of discrepancies and what it takes to document them, and we prioritize our corrective actions. Those are the type of improvements we're gonna talk about in the book that you're gonna download. And what that's gonna do is reduce our cost of failure, 
It's going to bring it down. It's going to reduce our preventive costs. And it's going to end up, right, bringing down our total cost curve. So we have a new minimum quality. So we're bringing down the cost of the entire quality management system. We hit not by eliminating steps, but by making those steps more efficient. That's what this work is today and the presentation that follows and the document that you can download. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the document.